Last time we chanted the Dhammachaka Pavatana Sutta and at the end of it we saw that Anya Kondanya had attained to become a Sotapanna. That means he got to the first path of the four paths along the way. Now I was going to tell the story of Kondanya today but I think I'm going to tell it next time because I want to give you more context about the 28 Buddhas. As you see around the Vihara, we've just been chanting about the 28 Buddhas and around the Vihara we have 14 up this side and then 14 down this side. So, just to tell you a little bit about those Buddhas so that you can understand the context a little bit better, okay? So the first four Buddhas, that is Tanankara, Maidankara, uh, Saranankara and Deepankara, they all appeared in one aeon. So then we need to know what is an aeon. You all know that Aeon is a supermarket and you go shopping there, but it's taken the name, it's taken the name from a period of time. And that period of time is from one big bang until the next big bang. That's what an Aeon is. From the big bang, when the universe starts, expanding and evolving until it starts contracting again in a devolution. There's first of all an evolution and then a devolution and eventually it contracts until it becomes, I suppose, like a black hole and then it explodes again in another big bang. So that is an incredibly long period of time. It's now about 13 billion years since our universe began, right? But that's just one aeon. But these four Buddhas, they lived four immeasurable amounts of aeons and a hundred thousand aeons before. So you can see that this is an incredibly large amount of time. Yeah. We can't even imagine one aeon. We can't count the years in one aeon, let alone uh, in four immeasurable amounts of aeons and a hundred thousand more of them. But during the last of those Buddhas, Deepankara, that's the time that our Bodhisattva made the aspiration to become a Buddha and then four immeasurable aeons and 100,000 aeons later he became Gotama Buddha which is the last of the 28 Buddhas right during all that time which is an enormous long time as you can kind of try to imagine uh, then he met every Buddha that appeared during that time and he renewed his aspiration and he was confirmed in his uh, aspiration by the Buddha of the time. Now we can't tell you the stories of all of them but during uh, Deepankara Buddha's time then he was the uh, recluse Sumedha and Sumedha uh, heard he was uh, somebody who was very highly developed himself. He had already attained the eight jhanas and he had attained the five abhinyas or superpowers. And because he had the superpowers, he was uh, flying through the air one day when he saw a lot of people at work on the floor uh, beneath him. So he went down and he asked 
what what is going on why are you working like this and then um, they told him that a Buddha had appeared in the world and they were preparing the road so that he could come to their town and then they would be giving dana to the Buddha and to his uh, disciples. It said there was a thousand billion monastics at the time of Deepankara Buddha. So they were waiting for this great crowd of people to be coming along and then they would be giving a dana to them. But to, they had to prepare the road first because the road was uneven and it had many ditches and things. So Sumedha asked if he could help with this uh, work and they knew that he was a very powerful uh, recluse so they gave him uh, permission and then they gave him a very difficult part of the road. But before he could work on it completely, then Buddha Deepankara and the monastics started coming along and uh, he hadn't managed to prepare the road. So what he did was he laid down in that ditch so that the Buddha and the monastics could walk across him rather than walk in the mud rather than walk in the mud, he rather that he would lie down in the mud. And you will often see a representation of Sumedha and Deepankara, and Sumedha is, worship, is lying down in the mud so that the Buddha and the monks can pass over. Of course, as far as we know, the Buddha uh, did, did not walk across Sumedha, but it was his intention, you see, that the Buddha would have an easy way to get across that ditch. So later, the uh, Sumedha went to where the Buddha was teaching. They gave the dana, and Sumedha went to where the Buddha was teaching. And then he made his aspiration to become a Buddha in the future. Okay, and. The Buddha, Buddha Nipankara, the fourth of those Buddhas, he gave a confirmation that at a later stage, four immeasurable amounts of aeons away and a hundred thousand aeons away, he would become Buddha Gautama. Now I can't tell all the stories, but all the stories are actually on my website. So if you want to know the stories of all the encounters between our Bodhisattva and the Buddha, you can find it on my website. Um, I've extracted it from a longer story. Uh, but the important thing is, we come down to Anomadasi. Anomadasi is the fifth Buddha from the end, okay? Anomadasi. Now, Anomad, during Anomadasi's time, then the people who would eventually become Venerable Sariputta and Venerable Moggallana, this is Venerable Sariputta, this is Venerable Moggallana, they made their aspiration. Now, to become chief disciples doesn't take as long as to become a Sama Sambuddha. But it does take one immeasurable and a hundred thousand aeons. So that's when this Buddha, Anomadasi, was uh, around in the world. So, then Mosari Buddha and then Mogalana made their aspirations to become chief disciples. And at that time, Buddha Anomadasi confirmed it. The next really important one is the one just before the end, Padamutara. The second one just before the end on this side. During Padamutara's time, 
he was born 100,000 aeons before our period, okay? And it's during his time that all the great disciples, that means 78 uh, great disciples, not counting Sariputta and Moggallana, they all made their aspirations during Padamuntara's time. And once they'd made their aspiration, like Sumedha had made his aspiration, they started to fulfill the perfections. And during all these periods, long, long, imaginable amounts of time, they were fulfilling the uh, perfections until they came to Buddha Gautama's time. The next really important uh, Buddha is the last four on there. Kakusanda, Kurnagamana, uh, Kasapa, and then Gautama. They all appeared in our aeon. That means the our period. And there's one more Buddha to come later. That Buddha is represented by the statue in the corner there, Neteya Buddha. At the moment he's still a Bodhisattva, so he's portrayed as a Bodhisattva. But later, after a hundred thousand years, after our Buddha, Gautama, right, Metea will come to uh, be the next Buddha. And in the Middle Ages, a lot of people who had missed out on uh, meeting Buddha Gotama, they made aspirations to meet Buddha Metea because during the time of a Buddha's actual uh, teaching career, it's much easier to attain even than later. Although we have all the teachings, we see that there are less and less people are attaining in our time. But during the Lord Buddha's time, thousands of people were attaining. Yeah. And they were going to the end of their uh, paths. So this is what I wanted to tell you. Uh, is just to explain why we chanted about the 28 Buddhas, the 28 Buddhas here, and the role that they play uh, in the uh, cosmological unfolding of the uh, universe. One thing I should say is, four immeasurable amount of aeons and a hundred thousand aeons, each aeon being from one big bang to another big bang, is an incredibly long period of time. And yet during that time, there were only 28 Buddhas, or if we count Metea, 29 Buddhas. During that whole long, long period like that, it's extremely rare to come across a Buddha. But we are now in the time of a Buddha Sasana, and we have the teaching, and we have a human form, and we're able to practice. So to waste the opportunity and just land up as an animal or a painter or something like that in the next life, is really wasting your opportunity because you're not going to get this opportunity uh, very often to be born during the period of a Buddhasasana is very, very rare indeed. Even when you are born, you might not be born as a human being. Even when you're born as a human being, you might not be a Buddhist. Even when you're born as a human being and a Buddhist, you might not have any faith. Even when you're born as a human being and a Buddhist and you have faith, you may have faith, you may not have the chance to practice very much. So while you have the chance to practice, please take it seriously and put your best efforts into uh, getting as far along 
as you possibly can so at least you set yourself up for your next life and then you can continue on your journey until you attain Nibbana. Everybody say Sadhu. Do you want to translate? Do you think you could?